So last night, um, Joy, I was watching Hard Knocks. Yes, same. And then the Dodgers played the Pirates, and I found myself flipping back and forth because Hard Knocks was boring. And that's actually great news for the Dallas Cowboys. You're officially boring. You're a, you're, you're a boring team. Um, you ever have somebody in your family? Think about your family for a second. You're driving around listening to me. You're watching me on TV. Anybody in your family that's always got a lot of drama? They're the most successful people in your family? There's a name for people that don't have a lot of drama. It's called successful people. Um, successful people tend to have smarter life habits, better life habits. They can see problems, dilemmas before they happen. And I watch the Cowboys now, and Dak's a grown-up, and Amari Cooper's a grown-up, and Demarcus Lawrence, I watch the show, looks like a grown-up, and Zach Martin's a grown-up, and Tyron Smith's a grown-up, and Jalen Smith's a... Boring. The Kansas City Chiefs, for all their stars are remarkably quiet. Patrick Mahomes goes home to his beautiful wife and child, has dinner and watches film. The loudest cowboy in the last several years was Zeke. Remember those first couple years came out of college? Oh, it was a tire fire. There was something every week. And now he's really matured. Remember Des Bryant? He never did. Tim Duncan in the Spurs dynasty? That lasted for 15 years. Brady's dynasty in New England? That lasted for almost 20 You know what? They never were noisy. You start looking around this league, the Steelers in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, most of my life, the Pittsburgh Steelers were the franchise of no formidable blue collar IBM. And then about five years ago, the Steelers got, I don't know if you noticed, really noisy and they've never recovered. You know who isn't? Buffalo is quiet. Kansas City for their stars. I don't hear much. Baltimore, Lamar Jackson, I see him occasionally get off that jet ski. (laughs) That's about it. It's about all I hear. Ozzie Newsom's been one of the best general managers and executives in this league for 25, 30 years. I don't know if I've ever heard him talk. L.A. Rams, Joy and I are here. It's amazing. They're in Los Angeles. They might as well be in Jacksonville. You have to squeeze information out of Aaron Donald. They never, you never hear about them. They're never in trouble. In fact, they, they brought in a loud guy, Jalen Ramsey, who once brought a Brinks truck to a Jags practice. Even he's pretty quiet now. I've watched this show, Hard Knocks, for years. The two loudest teams were Hugh Jackson's Browns and Rex Ryan's Jets. How did that end up? Folks, the only news Tampa's made this offseason, hey, we re-signed all our star players. I want to congratulate the Cowboys for graduating to boring and adulthood. It's a good sign. In fact, the loudest Cowboys, Jerry Jones, the crazy owner. (laughs) Swear to God, he's the only one making noise anymore. Heard brought to you by Jersey Mike's BSM above. So um, this is interesting. Jamal Adams, middle of our show yesterday, has agreed to a contract for the Seahawks. So let's start. It's a very positive show. Let's start with the good news. Jamal Adams is great, and now he's well compensated. And that gives Seattle five great players, either in their prime or darn close to it. Russell Wilson, Jamal Adams, Dwayne Brown, Bobby Wagner, DK Metcalf. I've always said in the NBA, you got to have at least two great players in their prime to win a championship. Really, really good players. Ideally, if you get three, like Katie, Steph, and Clay, you've got a dynasty. But if you have two great players in their prime, that's a championship team. And uh, in the NFL, you need like five minimum, hopefully six. You know, Kansas City may have seven. Well, then you're favored to win the Super Bowl. So that's the good news. You look around the NFL, the organizations right now, they have at least five, hopefully six great players. It's Tampa Bay. It's Baltimore. It's Kansas City. You know, it's the 49ers. It's now the Seahawks. It's Green Bay. Um, Now, I've always said, once you get great, you should take all the money you can. All the money you can, your first two contracts. But I do think Russell Wilson will have a decision to make. 
And I know his wife isn't Giselle. And I know like Aaron Rodgers, maybe he doesn't have the big state farm commercial. But there are times in life that money is not the most important thing. I'll give you an example. Transportation. Just spend the money on a car. You want your car breaking down? Want to be late to that big meeting? You want to get the label at work? Yeah, Bob's undependable. Car's always breaking down. Just pay. Just pay for the car. Just have reliable transportation. By the way, you'll lose money on it. Cars are a depreciating asset. Houses aren't. Boats actually don't lose their value over time, but cars do. You you drive it off the lot, it's worth 30% less. Take the loss. It's worth losing money. You do not want to be undependable person at work. You don't want to be late to a big wedding. You don't want to be late to work. You don't want to be late to a meeting. You don't want to be late to a client. You don't want to be late to pick up your kids. You don't want to be late to put your kids in a recital or practice. Lose money on that. And it's very interesting. I think Russell Wilson, after this year, has to start graduating to a different class. So I've, I've always believed in the NFL for great quarterbacks, there's two classes. There's the first two contracts, 22 to 32. Take every penny. 32 and beyond, don't. Take a loss. Now players in the NBA and NFL have revenue streams, seven figures annually in social media. You saw the Patrick Mahomes shoe deal. Russell, get one of those. NFL players now have multiple revenue streams. This is what Drew Brees and Brady figured out. Drew Brees, first two contracts, took all the money. Should. Saints were losing. Last couple took a little less. By the way, made it up in endorsements and eventually an NBC TV deal. But he elevated his brand because he was winning. Drew Brees is not working at NBC. If he's seven and nine his last five years, he's not, he's not getting those gigs. Kirk Cousins, not getting that gig. So for quarterback, and I'm somebody take all the money, but the world has changed for NBA stars and quarterbacks. They are now getting shoe deals. They can now make millions on Instagram and Russell's not there yet. But if Russell's nine and eight and out of the playoffs every year, cause he he's running for his life or he's 12 and 5 and getting to the conference championship, Russell's going to walk right out of this. He'll he'll have made 11 million dollars less, had better teammates, made it back in shoes, made it back in Instagram, and I think he's getting very close to this because if you look at Seattle, they're going to have to pay DK Metcalf in a year. Isn't Russell better with DK Metcalf? He's certainly better with Dwayne Brown. I'm not saying to do it now. He's not there yet. But I think with Aaron Rodgers, you're getting to a point where Aaron is better taking a little less and winning games. Brady figured it out. Drew Brees figured it out. And I think the next two guys are Aaron and Russell. So I'm happy for Jamal Adams, but just know they got to get that Dwayne Brown thing and that DK Metcalf thing figured out in the next year and a half. Those, those fellas are going to be expensive, and those guys absolutely make Russell Wilson more viable through his endorsements, social media, make him a bigger deal. So there are times where you take a little less, you take a loss, just, just spend money on the car. And the minute it drives off the lot, you lost 10 grand. You just lost 10 grand. You don't want to be the guy that is always late to the meeting because your car broke down. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.